So the IT environment obviously plays a big role in today's audit. We've always needed internal controls. The Treadway Commission back in the 70s formalized internal controls and, and defined it. And accountants have played a role in that for the financial reporting environment all this time. Of course, the IT environment complicates things because I can walk out with a thumb drive full of uh, an entire company's information compared to the old days when I would have to bring out 10 file cabinets full of folders to get the equivalent of that information, or even more maybe. So data is concentrated. Data is added and it expands rapidly. We have access to data from all over the place now. Corporations allow their employees to work from home or work from remote sites, which means they don't have to physically be in the office and unlock that filing cabinet. All they need to do is have a way to get into the servers. So there are a lot more malicious activities that can take place uh, with this electronic access. And it allows for electronic access by management to commit uh, fraud by overriding controls as well. So again, same objectives for the controls environment, just a whole new set of problems to deal with from a technology standpoint. So when it comes to the IT audit, we've got a lot of different components in place. Yes, we have the hardware, we've got the software, we've got the data comm environment, which you probably would think of in the databases, you, which you would probably think of, but also the people and the business processes that have been put together also come into play. So the IT audit covers all of those functions. And then it's important to consider the notion of assurance versus attestation. So assurance are audit procedures that are performed to help the company improve quality. So assurance, basically any non-financial statement audits would typically be considered assurance audits. We talked earlier in the semester about XBRL being audited. So any XBRL audit would be an assurance audit. And all the big four, all your, your large uh, CPA firms have some IT audit function in their practice. Risk management, operational systems, uh, technology, security risk services. And you'll see these showing up depending on how the CPA firm is organized and with each new managing partner a, a CPA firm brings in or, or CEO, if you will, uh, they could shift the org structure around a little bit. So sometimes they show up in advisory services and provide services uh, because a lot of advisory services practices, practice groups have a lot of technology knowledge so they can help out the audit functions. Uh, sometimes they show up in the assurance service and audit uh, branch of the organization. So uh, depending on your firm, you might want to check the org structure of your firm to see where the IT audit function falls. All right. So finally, we've got SAS 78, which describes uh, the control activities and lays them out uh, pretty much the way we've discussed them in the last few uh, discussions. We've got our computer controls, we've got physical controls, and within those computer controls, we've got the general controls and the application controls, just like we talked about. On the physical standpoint, we've got all kinds of different ways of performing physical controls. Uh, segregation of duties is one that's going to come up many times uh, when segregation of duties can't be achieved due to budgetary constraints or whatever. Supervision would be a uh, compensatory control. Keeping accounting records and a good audit trail in those accounting records, uh, as well as the other ones, authorization, verification, access control. So SAS 78 more or less mirrors the COSO report and is an update to SAS 55. So that's our first uh, discussion of auditing IT environments. Hopefully you found it helpful.